Hi, today's video we're going to talk about uh, the Airplate S series. Uh, it's a picture behind me. It's a cabinet cooling fan system. So if you have any of these, or one of these, or one of these, or this, and on and on, you probably have a problem with this, heat. You have a media cabinet, you're storing all your stuff, you know, nice, neat, looking pretty, but heat is the enemy, right? So what do you do to take care of that when you have a media cabinet with your different game systems, your media streamer? Well, today uh, we're going to install one in ours, and we're going to share that with you, as well as some results with before and after temperature readings, and see how quiet the AirPlate runs. Um, we did purchase this on Amazon, and there'll be a link in the description. Um, it's made with aluminum. It's a uh, very nice, solid. Uh, there statement is that it's an 18 decibel noise level fan. We're going to install one six inch fan, but they come in different sizes and varieties and, and colors. I have a white one installed uh, that we'll share with you uh, that I've already done, and we're going to show you how I'm installing the black one here. Um, so they have a single six inch, there's a double, a dual if you will, and even a triple, and these are able to be daisy chained together. Uh, the switch that comes with the one that I have uh, installed the white version, if you will, in our white cabinet. It has a low, medium, and high switch. Uh, the one I'm putting in the media cabinet here underneath our large screen TV, I'm going to install this here. It's a, it's a thermal trigger. Basically, you'll, you'll plug this in and place the trigger, you know, around your, um, probably your hottest device. So ours is our Xbox. And uh, obviously, they put out a lot of heat. I want to put that thermal sensor close to the Xbox, so when it's running, it's going to trigger the need for the fan to kick on or off. Um, the other part about it is um, you can set, set the temperature that you want it to kick on at. Um, so we're going to get going on the install. Let's uh, go take a look at it now. So here's our media cabinet. Uh, fits underneath our, our large screen TV. Um, it's a nice looking piece of furniture, so I don't want to do any type of install that's going to you know, be too aggressive. So what we're going to do today is slide this open, slide the unit forward, get behind it. There's a quarter inch uh, piece of plywood on the back. There's a hole in the back center where some of the wires are passing through currently. I'm going to mount the air plate to that because it's up towards the top where the heat is anyway and see if we can't exhaust the heat that uh, accumulates. Right now, um, I ran the Xbox for three hours, and the temperature in here with the front doors closed was 99 degrees. So we're going to see what we can pull that down to once we install the air plate. Because we're running uh, NVIDIA Shield, we've got an Xbox, we've got a Wii, Wii remote chargers, the Xbox chargers, and our Pioneer amp that, that drives our, our sound system. So a lot of stuff in here. I think uh, by taking off the back, using an existing circular hole there for, for wires and uh, cutting that out with the template provided with the air plate and drawing the heat out um, is the way to go. So we're going to take that apart and we'll show you how that happens in the next piece. Okay, so we've got the back off. I've laid the template on the on the back. It is it's blue, obviously. This is the hole we were trying to show you from the front of the video, and so I've just basically made sure that the template is square with the back, so that when we put this fan in, it's not going to sit cockeyed. Uh, so this template slides right off of the fan. I'm just going to trace on the inside, which I've already done, and then the next thing to do, take the template out of the way, make our cut just slightly bigger than what you're tracing because you don't want the fan to fit snugly against this because that will cause it to transfer any type of vibration even if it's small to the back of this and that's what the instructions say just maybe an eighth to a sixteenth bigger than the template cut so I'm going to go on the outside edge as I make my cuts so that the fan will fit in there without touching the wood uh, paneling when, it, when it's uh, being installed so we don't have that vibration We brought the 
air plate out of the box. It comes just like this. One thing to know about is it does ship with the default installation of the fan blowing out of the grill. For the way I'm installing it, I'm going to obviously take this fan off, reverse it so that it's drawing air from the inside and blowing it out the back. So I want it to draw air in this direction. And it does say that you're able to take these screws out, flip the fan over, and instead of blowing air out the grill, it'll draw air in. So I'm going to do that now. Um, it comes like this on the end. It's got the low, medium, high switches here. Off, low, medium, and high. You can plug it into USB or you can also use the power adapter and you'll get 25% more output for your fan if you choose to you know, power it through the, the, the wall outlet. So quite a lengthy cable here. Let's see if I just undo it real quick. It's, uh, you know, I'm off camera here, but the, the cord itself is probably a good five foot from, from the end that would go into the wall to the switch. And then you still have additional wiring. If I want to, I could also just take it right from the fan to this USB port and plug it in to provide power for the unit. So I'm going to flip that around. I thought while I was uh, explaining that, I'd also show the, sh the thermal trigger here. Take that out of the box. So turn it around here. This is the switch that uh, will mount inside and this is the little thermometer here. You can press the button and it's got uh, presets for it and you can set it to 84, 88, 92, or 96 degrees. If you can get a shot of that. And uh, I'm not sure how that lights up or whatever but it looks like there's a little LED hole next to each one so you can tell which one you've selected. But just by pressing that you can choose the temperature at which you want your fan to kick on. So we're going to install that as well. So let's take that out of the box. USB powered as well. Mounting screws, instructions. This is $13. But I did opt to do the thermal trigger instead of just the, the switch on this device that you know it would be constantly running in that media cabinet. And if I'm not watching TV or playing a video game, it doesn't need to be running. So nice thing about that thermal trigger it's going to do the thinking for you it's going to kick on your system you know when it needs it so here's the the other piece of it this is the uh, sensor the heat sensor so we'll probably just have this mounted underneath the shelf we'll probably just have this mounted underneath the shelf if this was the the xbox or whatever media uh streaming server we want to have i'm Plan on putting it above the Xbox. It's probably the hottest thing we have. So just above the Xbox, so when this thing starts kicking out heat up to it, it's going to sense it. Turn on that fan. So that's that's the components we're working with. And now I think I'll just get this out of the way. The first thing I want to do is flip this over in the in the right direction. Okay, so before we install, we wanted to, to give you a shot of this because it'll be hard to do once it's in the cabinet. So kind of a demo of how this thing works and just to make sure everything is what it says. So the fan's been reversed. The air's going to draw through the front of the grill, kick it out the back of the media cabinet. From the back of the fan is a USB. Goes, it's a long cable. Hope I get on the shot. So it goes from here to the off, low, medium, high switch, which we're not using. Uh, we're going to be using the thermal probe. So... We want to put this in the high position so that when the probe calls for air, it's going to go at the high level. So that cord goes in the top of the selector, the thermal probe selector. I've got this 
plugged in the bottom right one going to the wall and uh, it's basically a USB cord on the end of this that can go into the back of a USB device however if you take it and plug it directly into a wall outlet you will get 25 percent more output so just for demoing and testing this is plugged directly into the wall um, on the bottom of the selector is another port and that's basically for your thermal probe and it's about an eight foot long cord so we've got a lot of cord all balled up here on the on the table but that's basically how this thing hooks up to select just click the top button and you can go from 84 88 92 96 degrees Okay, I'm going to put it on 84. Take the thermal pro here, and uh, if the camera person can scoop. We're going to put this down, pick up the probe. The fan's not running, and we're going to get crazy with some fire just to show what. This gets hot. This should kick on once it gets to 84 degrees. So I'm going to be kind of cautious with it, though. But can't think of another way to, to test other than maybe a hair dryer or something. But. All right, so we hit 84 degrees, probe sensed it. Now let's see if it cools off, will it shut off? So I got a bag of rice that you, know, you can stick in your freezer for um, little kids get their ouchies. You put it on there and it makes them feel good. I'm just going to lay that cold bag of rice on there, and that should cool that probe down, shut that off. That was about, what, 20 seconds or so? It cooled down. It shut off. So I'm confident that we can mount this. It's got a couple of mounting screw holes on, on, on the back side. We'll mount this just inside the cabinet door within reach. I don't think I'm going to ever adjust it lower than 80, uh, 84. But we'll mount that inside the door, run these wires where they need to. And there is a mounting plate for the thermal probe, kind of like it sticks to the underside of a shelf, which will hold this in place so that probe will be right above the, the Xbox. And uh, we're going to do that part next. Kind of hard to show you all of that, but once we're done, we'll show you the final install and uh, do some testing and see how much uh, cool the cabinet can get. So here's a shot of the completed install. It went very well. It took about three hours, and that's for you know taking things apart on the back, making the cuts, putting things in place. We're able to take the temperature from 99 down to 85 using a second setting on the thermostat there. Uh, the amplifier can run and watch... Uh, TV from the streaming shield, but when we kick on the Xbox, that's obviously hot. It kicks on the fan and it runs, keeps it down at 85 degrees. So we're very happy and uh, definitely would recommend uh, any of these uh, S series products. So I hope today's video was helpful for you, giving you some ideas on how to, you know, get some cooling into the cabinet that you have uh, your media equipment in. Um, it's it's working great for us so far. So if you have questions or comments or ideas on what works good for you know your system and uh, what's worked well please share them with everybody down below we thank you for watching and hope you have a great day